tell me more about your like what's your passion like what like i can see what it is but like tell people <laughs> like i all started basically my passion um is i would say being able to create being able to be creative um being able to express myself in a certain way um mm -hmm around stuff that I've learned, um, life lessons around just, you know, life in general, other people watching other people, what I'm yeah. you know, just saying, just life go on and stuff. So my passion kind of plays off of different stuff according to what life brings to me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, my passion for fashion or design at least, um, it's just being able to just do whatever I want to do. <laughs> it's a place where I could do what I want to do, make it come out how I want to make it. Like, it's all up to me. I can do whatever I want to do with it. And I love yeah. the fact that I'm able to do that. Nice. That's good. How long have you been doing this? Um, well, I first learned how to sew in when I was 10 um, in sixth mm -hmm. grade. I took a home economics class, and we learned how to sew. And then um, that Christmas, my mom bought me a sewing machine, and I actually sucked, and I stopped. Um, and then I didn't pick up sewing again until 2015. And I was just like, let me just try. Let me just see, you know. And I guess I did need that age, that maturity, to, like, grow up and try to figure it out, in a sense, because I gave up pretty fast back mm. then. So then I started in 2015, and... I kind of just kept going with it, and then I got better and better, and here I am now. That's good. That's really good. I think, I think when you said ten years old, it took me back to when I was six years old, <laughs> when I started playing the drums as well, and I was just doing it for fun. And then yeah. nobody really tells you whether you're doing it right or wrong. And no one, yes. And like I, I had made a pair of pants actually for my best friend. That this one made me quit. I brought them to her to school. They were some camouflage Bermudas, and I don't even know if <laughs> wow. you remember those, but they were like, they were like flare. She was like holding it open like this, and like the elastic popped. And so you know how the elastic makes it smaller. So yeah. when she was doing it like this, like she stretched it out. And then it just came apart. And like, I was like, you know what? After that, forget it. Like, I don't even want to do this no more. And I honestly quit sewing. Oh, at that no. Yeah. Damn. But sewing is like a, it's a, it's a skill because the way you, you get your like details, because you, you can tell when a dress is done well, when it's done in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the main, thing to look at like how do you look at a store and you're like oh this is nice or this is terrible um really the first thing i look at is the material mm -hmm. um i look at the material because material plays a big part on you like you sewn it so like yeah. if the material is like weak if it doesn't feel good i'm like okay then you kind of look at the price and then if the price isn't right it's like mm, it's not worth it but if you feel it, if you're looking at the color and it's just like first the color pops out, then the material, and then, you know, after that, it's just like, okay, I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, but also, like, um, I feel like someone is for someone that pays attention to detail really good. Um, I feel like people that don't have an eye for, like, specific details, like, or pretty work is not good for them as well because, um I don't know. But then again, sometimes you can have sloppy work and people don't pay attention to it. So That's it's just true. it just really depends on who your client is, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So that that's what like puts you into the fashion set sense where like you can be passionate about what you do and it mm -hmm. inspires you to do more because you can see like the little details that people are missing that you can like take advantage of mm -hmm. and you know come out on top. I agree. Yeah. Okay. How do you like? How do you pick out your models? Because if anybody has not checked, by the way, check out Chelsea's page. She got a lot of content for you guys to like. You know. Okay. Take so, it. so I want to know. First of all, I think women are beautiful. That's that's from us. I'm not gay. 
but I do check out women. I like beautiful women. I'm repeat, I'm not gay. <laughs> Never thought about it. I'm not interested in a woman like that, but I love women's bodies. Like I love nice bodies. I like women that carry themselves nice. Um, I like women that have a kind of, you know, a charisma attitude about themselves. Like I like that. So that's kind of how I scout my models. Um, and then I check their work ethic, work ethic. Um, if they're teachable and not teachable as saying like models that don't know how to model, but just like, just being able to be open, you know, to different things. Yes. Um, like they have to be teachable. You can't have a model that just thinks they know everything. Just like right. me. I don't think I know everything, but models who teach me a lot as well. Um, but I just, I pick them like that and I go on Instagram and then like I'll follow them and then I just like follow them for a while just so that I could kind of get to know them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to work with you. And then I DM them or something. Like mm -hmm. I DM them, I email them and stuff, but that's pretty much how I pick my models that I want to work with. Nice. Okay. Have there been any incidents when you like your instinct didn't resonate with who you picked or every time you pick them and you can tell? The um, um, pretty much everybody that I have worked with, I have had a good experience. Um, I haven't had anybody that I've worked with that I'm just like, I never want to work with them again. Okay. But I am really good with reading people. Um, and I'm really good with, I people watch. So I kind of can tell what type of person somebody is just by you know, just by their vibes, just by their social media, just by, you know, stuff like that. So, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but that's big because you don't want to waste time, you know, trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, I, I definitely don't choose people with ugly attitudes. I don't choose people that, um, that are negative. Um, mm -hmm. I don't because one, another thing about design is everything is not going to be perfect. Right. Um, I'm not going to say I'm the perfect designer, but I don't, I want to be represented in a positive light. So I don't want someone that is going to, you know, talk trash or anything, you know, because I mean, you got to be sensitive. You're sensitive about your work. Yeah. So it's like, you can't necessarily have some, just anybody in your designs. Right. Yeah. That's true. Are, are there any favorites that you look up to, like right now that are out there that you're like, okay, we can match up. As far as models? Not models, like designs and designers and like where you see models fitting with designers and you can you can line your clothing line to them. Um, yes. Yes. I definitely mm, I definitely <laughs> want to work with Rihanna. Okay. She is like my major go to girl. Um I wanna work with I don't know, there's a few people I want to work with, but I don't know. I just haven't thought about it on that level exactly yet. Just okay. yet. Um, I more so look at people that are doing stuff like me that's, you know, trying to get there right now. Mm -hmm. So that's my main focus. But definitely Rihanna. Definitely her. <laughs> yeah, she looks like she can top it off, too. Because she also tried some African prints some time ago, mm -hmm. you know, which is very, very... um big because not everyone can work with them everyone but can pull it off everyone exactly. doesn't have to look for it and right. you have to have that energy you really do true and it shows through your confidence and through mm -hmm. like what you said if you have bad energy or bad attitude it will reflect on your clothes and, and it sucks that people don't see that but it's 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 a one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> yes yeah. i agree that's true would you have any advice for like young fashion designers or entrepreneurs, seem stresses? I would just say keep practicing. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, it takes up a lot of time, like a lot, a lot of time. Um, there's so many times I just want to throw the machine out the window. Um, I would literally just rather throw the machine out the window and go buy another one than to try to figure it out. But patience has taught me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just throw money away. Um, but it, it teaches you patience. But at the same time, you get frustrated a lot. So I would just say keep at it. Um, 
another reason why I kind of gave it up at a younger age is because I felt like there were so many people out there that, you know, were better than me or that, okay. you know, was doing stuff. And I'm just like, okay, what is little of me? What can I bring to the table? Yeah. You know, yeah. there are different clients. There are different people that like my designs versus someone else's designs. So I would just say keep at it. Like you have to keep pushing yourself. You have to keep at it and do what you love. Like if that's what you love, then you'll do it. Yeah, that makes sense. And with all these tips, I think it would be nice to also bring out the fashion show details because mm -hmm. what I, this is going to be my first fashion show, by the way. So, and mine as well. You know, so I'm really excited to see what comes out because with play, play started off as a hashtag. You know, it started mm -hmm. off as we don't play. And I kept thinking about it and I was like, what can I influence the community with? and not just give you a, a t-shirt to wear, you know, like what message am I sending? What am I bringing as a brand to your, your existence that probably you've never heard of that could influence you positively or for a better cause? And I was like, okay, let me go into play. And I got into fitness because I personally was not working out. <laughs> like I was not going to the gym. I was just, my brother was always working and I was not. But eventually I was like, I can't be owning a fitness line and I'm not fit. <laughs> that just does not look good. <laughs> but I mean, you could, you could like, you could like the, the idea of people working out though. I mean, people do a lot of time. People do, but you want to be following. Yeah. You want to you wanna have you wanna live the life. I understand. I can't tell you go and work out three times a week and I'm there's like a couch potato. Like, <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. So. With this one, I want to bring out like the four seasons mm -hmm. in the in the fashion show because I want to bring out the new languages that are out because we have French, we have Pidgin English, we have English, and we have Chinese. And some people have been requested for other um, languages, but I'm like, I don't want to throw all the languages in there, but mm -hmm. there's a reason why I'm tapping on each of these markets. So, like, for example, we don't play for French, it's civil play. And civil okay. play is like, please. So it's like we have those little nuggets of information that we still bring in codes of conduct for you to follow, but in a fashionable way so it doesn't look boring. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's what it is. And I'm excited because November 30th to December 1st is when we're going to have the auditions. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for the people that you'll bring on board. Um, I don't know. I don't know where they are, but I, I definitely know that because of your taste, you're gonna definitely bring a one people. So I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. And yeah, let's see how it goes. I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah. Do you have any questions about the fashion show or anything that I probably haven't mentioned in the past? Um, what is your outcome goal of the fashion show? Like, what can um, everyone expect after the fashion show from you? Um, pretty much, there's going to be a lot of engagement. That's one thing I'm going to engage with the community. I'm really doing it now mm -hmm. um, via podcasts, via, you know, giveaways. I usually have some giveaways on my Instagram sometime in the week, mm -hmm. you know. But as far as the fashion show, I want to bring it out to Atlanta first because I started this thing off in Houston. <laughs> so... I'm like, let me bring it to Atlanta, H-Town, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to bring it to Atlanta because I know Atlanta is an untapped market and mm -hmm. there's so much talent here and there's so many people that can really flaunt it out and do a great job with the outfits. So I want people to recognize play as not just outfits, but an avenue for entertainment experience. So okay. that goes in for music. We're going to go into music videos. Very soon, like, we're even thinking about working with the models and giving them, like, an artist profile, a model profile. Mm -hmm. You can put them up on YouTube, you know, have a very good blog presentation for them so that even after the fashion show, people can still look into it. Because I want to do it every year. But yeah. for me to achieve that every year, the first year needs to be big. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking about so many things, but I know that the core factor for this fashion show is to bring to the light how play has evolved from just being a t-shirt and a hashtag to a movement 
And then this movement is showing that we don't play. We don't play with our time. We don't play with our friends. We don't play with our businesses because our youth, we as millennials, we as, you know, the growing community, we have so many businesses, like we have new ideas coming out every day and technology is there to help us, you know? So I'm going to very soon get into apps. That's, that's a plan for next year, okay. you know, to have a play app. So before that happens, before any of this good stuff happens, I want to give people a feel of what they were missing and over the past year it. and what to expect. Yeah, it's going to be like a time travel. I think it's, it's yeah. a perfect idea. I love it. Yeah. Expect a lot of colors <laughs> and themes because the last album I dropped is called Colorful Sounds. And I okay. want to incorporate colors, lights, you know, with the music. We're going to set the mood. It's going to be very different. It's not just going to be, oh, we're walking. It's going to be like, okay, this is a red zone. This is the blue zone. And then each of those colors bring a certain theme and feel to the to the event. So I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. I'm excited too. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. But this has been great. You know, this is going to go on our podcast feed as well. And okay. let everybody know on your end, as I will, on my end. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you on November 30th. All right. Awesome. All right. All right. All right, then. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. Thank you guys for joining us live, by the way. If everybody has been on here, I've been seeing some people coming and going, but I appreciate everyone that took the time to click on our live spot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.